This is the Hemiway Cruiser, and it's a fat tire electric bike. I'm gonna show you a few different specific things about this bike, so I will have chapters below this video in the description box. In the first part, we'll talk about the installation, how long it took me, and how hard it is. Then we're gonna take it outside, and I'm gonna show you my very first impressions of it and tell you about the components. Then after that, we're gonna take it out to the beach on the sand, and we're gonna see how it performs on loosely packed sand as well as hard packed sand down by the water. I mean, look at those four inch tires on this bike. This thing's just begging to be ridden in the sand. So after all that, we're gonna take it out for a range test and I'm gonna see what kind of range I can get out of this battery. I ended up doing three range tests. The first was mixed riding. The second was a brutal torture test. And the third was a high speed test. Out here by the beach on a little ride, spotted some more Kimmy ways. Got it. Dang, look at the size of these tires. These boys are big. First impressions, taking this thing out of the box, it looks like it's actually pretty much assembled for the most part. And it's packaged up really well with all of these foam materials on it. It looks like the frame is really protected. It's a pretty big battery on there. Right away I can see why they're claiming a long range on this battery. This battery pack is quite a bit bigger than most of the other e-bikes I've seen so far. Well, let's check out what comes inside the box. So you got a little Hemiway hat, through axle, probably for the front wheel, a nice little tool kit, headlight, pedals, charger. How many amps? I'm guessing two. Two amps. So it's probably gonna take a while for this thing to recharge, especially considering it's a big battery pack. So first thing, let's get this bike on the charger to make sure the battery's charged up while we build it. So it comes with a set of keys, which is nice, so somebody can't just walk up and take your battery. We'll go ahead and unplug it, and then we'll get it on the charger. Well, let's see how much this battery weighs. It's a pretty big battery. Throwing on the scale here. Eight pounds, 11.9 ounces, so Pretty much almost a nine pound battery. LG cells, that's a good sign. 48 volt, 17.5 amp hour. Plug this side in first. So it's not fully charged. I don't know where it's at. Oh, check it out. It's got a little button up here. So yeah, it looks like it's about three fourths full. So that's actually a good way to ship an e-bike. You don't want the battery to be fully charged and sitting there stressing out the cells. First step, get the handlebars on. Then you put the headlight on next. Next, we'll put the front wheel on. Make sure you get that snugged up pretty good before you pull the lever down and everything's lined up. Make sure it's really tight because you definitely do not want that front tire falling off on you. Pedals on and tight. So the brakes are rubbing a little bit. I'm honestly too excited to get this thing out on the road, so I'll fix it later. Hopefully it doesn't affect the range too much. Battery's been on here for about two hours. It still doesn't say it's fully charged. It's at three out of four lines are. Let's get this battery on the bike and get outside. One of the first things I noticed about this seat, actually, I like that there's like a little handle down here to kind of help you pick it up. Cause this is a little bit of a bigger bike for sure. With these massive tires, um, I'm looking really forward to getting this thing out on the beach and seeing how this performs riding in the sand. Another thing that I really like is this rear rack that comes on it. So you can bring stuff to the beach or wherever you're going. I like the wood look to it. Another thing about the Hemiway Cruiser is it does have front suspension. It is adjustable. Another thing about the tire that you don't see on just every bike is there's actually some uh, reflectors on the side to make you more visible. Speaking of visibility, this does come with a front headlight on it and there's also a rear tail light. Oh, you gotta check this out. I just learned something new about this bike in the elevator. It's got brake lights. Of course, it is a hub drive motor and there is a rear cassette with gears. So with these gears carrying around the extra weight and stuff, it should really help this thing for performing, you know, climbing hills as well as going off-road. We're just gonna ride it up this hill, see how it does full throttle. Ooh, the steep hill. It can do it, it can do it, oh yeah. As I mentioned, the battery is relatively large. It's about a 17.5 amp hour battery. I'll put the specs for that up on the screen here. Other first impressions are, I like the hand grips. They have like a leathery kind of feel to them and the stitching on them just looks neat and kind of fancy. The display up here is large and very visible for sure. You can adjust the um, assist levels right here by pressing that button and it shows you your pedal assist level right there. 
On the right side you have your gear changing lever as well as the button here and you also have a twist throttle right here. The bike does come with Tektro disc brakes. They are mechanical disc brakes as opposed to hydraulic disc brakes. These particular brakes are the Ares series. It appears that the controller is actually mounted down here by the bottom bracket just under the frame. And you also get the Tektro Ares disc brakes on the rear. And really what I'm doing right now is just trying to get some good B-roll because I'm gonna get this thing out on the sand and get it so dirty right away on my very first ride. You can cycle through the different information. So this is average miles per hour, trip, odometer, time, as well as max speed. There's also a button here to turn on and off the lights. The preload adjustment is on the left fork, and then the compression adjustment is on the right side fork. Additionally, there is a lockout, so you can turn the suspension effectively off. That means if you're riding on super smooth surfaces and you don't want the suspension to be active, you can just lock it out. I actually really like that this has uh, this style throttle rather than the thumb throttle. I've kind of found that using thumb throttles has caused my uh, thumb to actually kind of get a little bit like of like a muscle strain almost just from holding it in one position whereas I feel like this might be a little easier to kind of maintain like a cruise control. And over on the left hand grip here you do have a bell that comes built in. This is a cruiser style bike and I really like these riser handlebars. I think it's going to make the riding position of this bike as a cruiser really nice. So with all that said, that's just kind of some of my first impressions looking at this bike. So before we go down to the beach, first thing we'll do is just go for a little ride down here in the basement. I have not been on this bike whatsoever. We're going to hop up on here, power it up and see how it is. Screen powers right up. Starting in gear two, let's just see what it's like to pedal on zero actually you know the very first thing i'm noticing about this bike just kind of maneuvering it down here to the basement is uh it's a pretty substantially heavy e-bike compared to other e-bikes i've ridden so hopefully the weight really pays off so zero just pedaling with no power assist it actually gets moving along just fine and uh yeah you can tell right away these big tires are making for a, a plush ride and this is a beast of a bike. I'm actually liking it so far. Uh, I should say for your reference, I'm six foot five. I weigh 195 pounds. So that should affect range for sure. Uh, the suspension is nice and bouncy. This is great, actually. I really like the front suspension. Gears are snappy. It went right into the granny gear, no problem. The index shifter is nice. Yep, snappy, gears change very nicely. Uh, they're all lined up perfect, which is great. I don't hear any clicking or anything like that. They're not trying to jump cogs. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this uh, twist throttle a little bit. Yep. Adds power. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I love e-bikes and this thing moves along nicely. You can tell it's got some mass to it. You know, you let off that throttle and it just keeps on coasting. So let's go ahead, give it some more throttle. Let's just go max speed, maybe. Wow, this thing feels smooth. Dang. I'm moving quickly down here. Oh yeah, and turning, you can tell the, the mass, the uh, inertia of these tires is a little bit uh, slow um, to uh, lean, I guess you could say. It's not as nimble as, you know, like a, a bike with like lighter wheels. These tires are going to have some great off-road benefits, I'm sure. Uh, but you can definitely tell there's some weight to it. Okay, I probably shouldn't do max speed down here, actually. But anyway, this is fun. So I'm gonna try some pedal assist modes. Pedal assist one, pedal assist two. Makes a big difference, wow. Pe oh wow, pedal assist three is, my goodness. So on pedal assist two, or pedal assist one on the granny gear, yeah, it's definitely got some get up and go to it. Let's try shifting the gears. Under, under pedal assist. Pedal assist two, gear four. Wow, 
Wow, this thing just like wants to take off on you for sure. <laughs> As far as comfort, uh, these grips, they feel really nice actually on my hands. I don't, they're probably not like real leather, but they have like a leather feel to them. They're like ergonomic. So it gives you like a, a little like wide space to distribute your weight across on the handles. And then the geometry is like fairly upright. So it's, it's comfortable to be on this bike. And I actually, I like the seat as well. So this thing kind of feels like a monster truck to ride a little bit. Uh, it, it's kind of a cool feeling. So we're gonna get this thing off-road in this park over here. Oh, the brakes are good too, by the way. They seem to do a good job. So cruising through the grass, bump the gear down. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels nice. Oh yeah, pedal assist too. You can tell that front suspension, these big tires are definitely helping keep the ride smooth, which is great for a cruiser style bike. As soon as we hit that hill, the pedal assist too kicked right in and started, you know, helping bring it up the hill. Feels good off-road, but we're gonna have to get down to the beach and uh, see how it does in the sand. Cause that's, that's really what I want to try out. So cruising along the LA river here will be a good opportunity to do a, a top speed run. Uh, going up a hill here though, this thing seems to be handling this hill totally fine. I'm on gear three. I could downshift more if I wanted to, but I don't even need to. I'm in gear two now. It's climbing this hill just fine on pedal assist three at 15 miles an hour. I'll go ahead and bump it up to pedal assist five, not use the throttle. Uh, we got to shift gears because that cadence is picking up quick. So the speedometer is reading 22.6. 23 I'm in top gear this is a smooth ride I I really like the way these tires feel they really eat up all the bumps in the road especially with that front suspension and then commenting again on the, the pedal assist modes you know it, it really just seems like whatever um, pedal assist you put it on there's like a predetermined speed it's trying to get you to. So like, you know, I'm hardly pedaling at all, but you know, it just brings me up to 15. And then the motor will just basically work as hard as it needs to to maintain that speed, it seems like. So moving on to pedal assist four, like it just instantly drops that power and dang, it brings me all the way up to 21. Oh shoot, I'm gonna have to use the brakes here to turn right. All right, and then, yeah, see, it's just, I'm not even pedaling, but you know, on pedal assist four, it's like, feels like it's gotta get you straight up to 20. So right now we're at 5.2 miles, no sign of the battery giving out at all. So another thing I wanna comment on while I'm thinking of it is uh, just the motor noise. It's pretty typical hub motor noise, uh, similar to pretty much your standard, typical budget hub motor. It's not like loud and intrusive, but it's definitely not silent. Something you kind of just get used to. Uh, once you kind of get up to speed and the motor is not working that hard to just kind of maintain your speed, it's actually really pretty quiet. Like you can't even hear it. The only noise I can really hear coming from this bike is these massive off-roading tires. They just, you know, big tires just make a little bit of noise. Welcome to the beach. So one thing I can say for sure about these tires is they give you a ton of grip and confidence in the sand on the path. Like normally tires are like super slick on here and you'd be sliding out, but these ones don't. So these are the kind of puddles I was talking about before. This is like really where these big fenders come in handy. So when you go over them, it doesn't kick up water all over you. So now what we're gonna do is ride this thing out onto the sand, which I feel a little bit bad doing to this brand new drivetrain. But I'm really curious to see how these big fat tires can handle the loose pack sand. So gear one, granny gear. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, it just kind of goes right along. Wow, this is pretty awesome. Oh, 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 oh. So this is really gonna kill the range of this 
uh, motor. Oh gosh, <laughs> lost my balance. Yep, you gotta keep some weight over that back wheel and just really kind of power through with the throttle. Like bike, man. Thanks, man. He says he likes the bike. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is sweet actually, but man, this is gonna kill the range. The uh, motor's working like full power. Okay, now it's a little more hard packed here. So we'll be able to ride along here for a little bit. Should be pretty cool. So after riding out through all the sand there, that loose pack sand, give it a full blast. Uh, we are at four out of five battery power bars and 10.1 miles in. So let's go for a little cruise along the beach. Yeah, these big tires and the front suspension, it's really just working pretty nicely here. Feels about as smooth as it can be for riding on some pretty hard packed sand. I've never rode a bike down here by the water like this before, mostly because I've never had a bike with big enough tires that could actually be able to handle riding out here. And then, you know, if you do this without a motor on a bike, it's just gonna be really really hard to be able to pedal through something like this not having assistance from a motor not that it can't be done but this is a breeze i'm literally just on pedal assist one right now going six miles an hour even getting up here where it's a little bit more loose pack sand uh, this bike can handle it pretty much no problem it's kind of fun trying to be able to balance it still in the granny gear just cruising uh, looks like it's giving me two bars of power right now. So, I mean, we're getting terrible MPGs right now. You know, the, the battery economy of riding on this kind of surface out here is horrendous. However, that's kind of what these big tires are really meant for. You can get out here and enjoy other areas where you just can't take bikes with smaller tires. Big thanks to Hemiway for sending me this bike to review. If you want to see the current prices or if you're interested in buying one, you can check out the link below this video in the description box. If you did buy through that link below the video, it would help support this channel at no additional cost to you. And of course, I would greatly appreciate your support. So we should be able to turn off right here, head up here, see if we can get up this thing. Oh yeah, no problem. Ugh. We're going pretty much full. Oh, geez. Lost the balance. Keep that weight on the rear wheel. And here comes the board path right here. Again, those fenders are coming in handy, really just keeping all that sand from kicking up uh, all up in the air. What I'm going to do is just kind of cruise along here. Um, I'll probably pedal assist two, pedal assist three for quite a while down to the Palisades. So this is the end of the bike path here down to the Palisades. We are at uh 15.7 miles and it's showing still four out of five battery i just reached the end of the bike path on the other end down here in venice and we are at uh 22.9 miles with three bars of rain so two bars left on the battery and 11 miles to get home can the hemiway get us home we shall find out still chugging along two bars remaining rolling up on 37 miles here I've uh, been on Pedal Assist 3 basically the entire ride back from the Palisades. Coming up to almost mile 40 here, we're at, we're at 38.5 miles. The battery still hasn't dropped another bar yet. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the light. So it dims the display a little bit. It's not quite dark enough out here to see the light. Oh, there, shining on the ground now. There, yeah. So, the oh, whoa, about threw me off the back there. Got to be careful. <laughs> So it still has power uh, when you have two bars left. So I just crossed over mile 40 and right after that, the battery dropped down to one bar for the first time. So first time I've seen one bar at 40 miles. So it's getting pretty dark out here. The sun has pretty much set completely. Uh, I feel like the light is doing a pretty good job lighting up the road and helping me see where I'm going. So we got 42.4 miles right now. So, you know, I'm just gonna see what kind of juice this thing has left in it at the end of his battery. Cranking it up to five. It still moves. Still going up to 23. 
Obviously, it's not as zippy as on a full charge. All right, just crossed over mile 45 after going around the neighborhood and basically maxing this thing out. Uh, you know, it still says there's a bar left on there, but honestly, for all intents and purposes, this battery is pretty much completely drained. It's really not wanting to help me much anymore. And I was pretty much on pedal assist three for the majority of the day. And the second range test here, I went pretty crazy. I pretty much did full throttle and full speed. And I did full throttle in the sand for several miles. Uh, basically, we're just gonna be using this thing like a motorcycle using the twist throttle. So I'm about four miles into this ride, literally just holding down the twist throttle. It's been a little over five miles and I have not pedaled at all. Oh yeah, this is cool, man. Dude, I'm going like 13 miles an hour. Oh my goodness, I have got this bike so freaking sandy, but I'm having a blast doing it and that's all that matters as far as I'm concerned. Oh my goodness, I can hear all the sand in the drivetrain. Keep on going battery. So I just crossed over mile 15 of an absolute brutal torture test of this bike and we are at two bars of battery. Uh, I have not pedaled this thing at all and I've just been running it full throttle basically the whole time. But it's still got good power, you know, it still uh, accelerates and gets up to top speed. Seems to be holding up pretty well considering the circumstances I'm putting this thing through. So I made it about 16 and a half miles. We got one bar left. I can tell it's not completely ran down, you know, it's still got power. Considering how hard I pushed it on this ride, I think the Hemiway held up pretty good. In this final range test, I went for a longer ride on Pedal Assist 4 mostly. I was going above 20 miles an hour most of the ride. For this ride, I pumped up the tires to about 30 PSI and I also cleaned the chain from some of the sand and put on a little bit of chain lube. We are at exactly 62 miles on the trip. I think I'm just gonna do this on pedal assist floor. It is an absolute party out here. Saturday. And rolling up here on Manhattan Beach. Coming up on about eight miles. So I just made it down here to Hermosa Beach, actually right here in front of the 90210 Beach House. And we are at 72.4 miles and it still says full charge. Just a comment on my riding style so far. I've pretty much been on pedal assist four for the most part, toggling to three, pretty much three to four. And then, you know, riding on gear six and seven almost exclusively. And I've kind of been just giving it like a medium effort, you know, not overly exerting myself, but kind of pedaling and doing what a bicycle is supposed to do. Out here by the beach on a little ride, spotted some more Hemiways. Mile 24 of the ride. We are down to three bars of battery life. And I've been riding on pedal assist four and it's been giving me pretty much three bars of power for the most part while riding this ride today. Uh, 30 miles in, exactly. Plan that, you know, rode around the neighborhood a little bit. Uh, two bars remaining on the Hemiway Cruiser. I've been cruising on pretty much pedal assist four for the majority of today. So I have been pedaling. Uh, I have not been using the throttle and pretty much just toggling between four and three. This is all pavement riding pretty much on a concrete path, the beach trail. I did not take it off road at all today. After I got back, there was still plenty of battery left. So I didn't recharge it overnight and took it out again the next day. Pick up where we left off. 92.1 miles on the odometer. It says three bars, although it was kind of more like two. Four miles into this ride at a total of 34 miles on this charge. Found one battery and it's become clear to me if I don't start easing off the throttle and do more like pedal assist three, um, I'm gonna probably run out of battery on this ride. So I made it down here to Santa Monica, just hit 101 miles, one bar remaining. Feeling a little range anxiety at this point, knowing I'm about nine miles away from home. All right, battery has basically died on me at 105.4 miles. So that range would be 43.4 miles on one charge. 
So I hope these three range tests give you a pretty good idea of what the Hemiway Cruiser battery is like. So some of the pros of this bike is you can pretty much take this thing anywhere with those fat tires and the front suspension. It's like a monster truck. Also, the big battery on this bike makes for a really good range. I like that the hand grips are a ergonomic shape as well as a nice to touch material. And I also like the seat on this bike. So overall, the bike is comfortable. Another one of the pros is I like the twist throttle on this bike. I find the twist throttle to be better than thumb throttles. Also, it's nice that this bike does have a headlight and a tail light to give you more visibility when riding in the dark. So let's talk about some of the cons. One of the first cons of this bike is it doesn't have a very high top speed. So the max speed is about 22 or 23 miles per hour based on what I tested. The benefit of this top speed is it is a class two e-bike and that makes it more rideable in more areas as opposed to a class three or faster e-bike. Another thing I should mention is it is possible to log into the settings and modify the top speed of this bike. Keep in mind that will change it from a class 2 e-bike up to the next class though. Also another downside is you know at 72 pounds this is a pretty heavy e-bike. So if you need to be picking it up and carrying it places it's pretty heavy. The handle on the seat does make it easier to maneuver this bike and also removing the battery completely from the frame will make it easier for lifting and transporting the bike. Another con of this bike is it does have a pretty long recharge time. So that big battery is great because it gives you a lot of range but the 2 amp charger on this thing I think it says that it takes anywhere from six to nine hours to go from completely dead to completely charged. The benefit of a slow charge is you'll get a lot more charge cycles out of the battery and it'll last for years to come. But if you need a faster recharge time, if you need to charge it more than once per day, it is possible to buy a stronger charger. I've seen that some people in the Facebook group run as high as a 5 amp charger on this bike, which will cut the recharge time down to 3.5 hours from completely empty. One of the cons I found with this bike is the pedal assist modes. So the pedal assist mode seems to kind of work in jumps. So if you have it on one or two or three, it doesn't really seem to be like a gradual progression of power output from those pedal assist modes. It basically kind of seems to be like a set power output and once you change, the pedal assist mode and start pedaling it basically just like tries to get you up to whatever like predetermined speed that output number is set at and then once it gets you there it'll just kind of uh, give you whatever power you need to basically hold that pace so this means for me when i want to gradually apply throttle i need to be basically adjusting the pedal assist mode down and up or using the twist throttle. Now this isn't necessarily a problem, but it is a characteristic of the Hemiway Cruiser. So overall, I have been having a lot of fun on the Hemiway Cruiser. My personal favorite thing about it is taking it out on the sand by the beach. And so far, none of the other e-bikes I've reviewed or tested have been able to ride in the sand by the beach. If you are interested in learning the current prices or current promotions going on for this bike, I have a link below this video in the description box. And if you did decide you wanted to buy this bike and you buy through that link below. It would help support Tail Happy TV at no additional cost to you, and I would greatly appreciate your support. So if this review has been helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up. Any questions or comments you have, please leave down below the video. Subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.